Hello everybody, I am Jerry Ross, the Genie Vlogger, and welcome back to another video where I review your DNA and genealogy questions. And as always, if you have any DNA test questions or genealogy questions that you'd like me to answer in one of these videos, be sure to go to my subreddit to post that question and I will eventually get to it. Let's jump in. I tested my whole family on my heritage and myself on ancestry. I don't understand the results. So they say their mother and grandfather are showing Central Asian results Results, but their daughter is showing West Asian, even though the father of the daughter has no trace of any Asian. So why does the daughter have West Asian and not Central Asian? Is it possible that there are some overlapping of populations? They say one side of the grandfather's family can be traced to the 14th century, another side can be traced to the 17th century. What do the percentages suggest? And why does my grandfather have less Central Asian DNA than myself or my mother? I thought 3% suggest something along the lines of great, great, great grandfather or so question mark. So first her results, we're getting 50% England, 31% Eastern Europe, 10.9% North and West Europe, 3.3% Finnish, and then 3.6% Central Asian. Now for the mother, 75.1% North and Western Europe, 15.1% East Europe, 5.6% Italian, 2.1% Baltic, 2.1% Central Asian. So about 1.5% less Asian than the poster. And then our poster's father's results, we have no Asian in there. We have England, East Europe, Scandinavian, Finnish, Ireland, Scottish, Wales, Italian. So here's the grandfather who's getting 65.9% North and West Europe, 27.7% East Europe, 2.7% Ireland, Scotland, Wales, 2.6% Italian, and then 1.1% Central Asian. So it's gone from 36 for the poster to 2.1 for the mom and then 1.1 for the grandfather. And then the daughter, we're getting this 2.6 West Asian. So here we have the ancestry results with 80% German region, I think that is, 10% Norwegian, 4% Sweden and Denmark, 2% Scotland, 2% French, I think that is, 1% East Europe and Russia, and then 1% European Jewish. Now my best guess is this all is just relating to your Eastern European. And I think it goes to one of the things that you said, is there any overlap in these population groups? Well, between Central Asian, West Asian, and then Eastern European and Russian, those are all overlapping populations. So when we're looking at your results, we can even see that over here, that Central Asian, well, Kazakhstan, Uzbekistan, Turkmenistan, Kyrgyzstan, Tajikistan, Afghanistan, all of that. Well, yeah, you know, that's kind of, you know, Central Asian, but then look at where it's kind of hitting into. It's hitting into Russia. And honestly, these circles are just kind of centralized in where they're finding most of those people, but then when you think about population migration, one good thing to look at, even if you don't necessarily know the migration patterns, but just looking at the neighboring places, it's likely that there's going to be some sort of connection, whether it's a direct migration from one place to the other, or there's an ancestral connection where two different lines from one same group of people went different ways. Now, part of the reason why it may be difficult for them to decipher between Central Asian, Western Asian, and Eastern European also has to do with how they're reading the DNA. So one thing I've mentioned in a few videos lately is phasing. So that's the idea where you're taking the DNA from one of your parents, comparing it to your DNA, and then you're basically able to tell what's coming from your mom and what's coming from your dad specifically. Because before you do any phasing, you don't know what's necessarily coming from your mom and what's coming from your dad. But at a base level, that means that at every single point in your DNA, those two base alleles, well, one's coming from your dad, one's coming from your mom, but they don't know which one's which. So instead of reading what the correct line is, especially if there might be an error somewhere in that that's making it harder to decipher, they might be able to find some sort of connection to another nearby population group that really isn't there just because of the state of the DNA. So another way to think about it is, let's say you're doing a word search puzzle and you can find words that aren't actually part of the word search or even related to it. And so in the same sense, that's kind of what's happening here. So that's why sometimes you will get Central Asian or Western Asian, or it might be a mix and they, you know, it's hard for them to necessarily tell. 
And that's also why when you have yourself tested and then you have parents tested and then children tested, the results may not always add up in the way that makes sense. So, you know, like here you have the 3.6% Central Asian. Well, it might just be because of how the mix of your DNA is. They thought certain parts of the DNA that's actually coming from your dad, even though it wasn't Asian, when matched up with what you have from your mom, it becomes this weird mix of like your dad's DNA, your mom's DNA and comes together and then, oh, wow look at that it actually looks like it's central asian but i think understanding that really helps in understanding some of the more complex difficulties in figuring out these admixtures now as to looking into any possible actual west central asian ancestry there are a few things that you can start with to know number one if it truly is that you have some sort of west Central Asian ancestor that maybe somehow got into your Eastern European, you're correct in that it's probably going to be at least a third great grandparent, but of course it could be further back. Now you do have your grandfather tested, your mom's father, but I don't know if you said you had your mom's mom tested. But with all of that said, I do want to reiterate that my best guess is that that Central Asian or West Asian is coming through that Eastern European and even if there is truly some sort of West Asian or Central Asian ancestor in your family tree, you'll most likely be looking through that Eastern European ancestry to find it. Of course, there are other possibilities, but in my mind, that's the most likely possibility, and that's usually what you wanna do. You wanna start with the most likely possibilities and rule them out and work your way down. My Heritage versus Ancestry DNA, definitely curious about these results. So looking at My Heritage, we have Irish, Scottish, Welsh, 46.6, North and West European, 31.9, English, 19.7, with 1% Eastern Europe. I see there's a drop down for Middle East, so I'm guessing maybe there's like some point something percent Middle Eastern, but I see genetic groups, Kentucky, Ohio, Virginia, West Virginia, Northeastern, Midwestern, USA, Midwestern, US, Midwestern, Northeastern, USA. So with those genetic groups, my guess is through multiple lines of your family, you probably can trace pretty far back to, um, you know, like 18th century, maybe even 17th century, you know, Kentucky, Ohio, Virginia, West Virginia, stuff like that. So a family that likely settled in those areas right around the revolution or pre-revolution. Now for your ancestry, European and Northwestern, 52%, Scotland, 36%. Well, that adds up pretty much pretty well with what you get through my heritage, Ireland 7%, Germanic Europe 3%, Norway 2%. So really nothing too crazy. Everything seems to kind of match up. When you add up the England, Northwestern Europe, Scotland, and Ireland, it all comes to basically 90 something percent. I'm sure part of that Germanic Europe and Norway is lumped into the North and West European on my heritage. And my guess, whatever that 1% Eastern European is in my heritage, that's probably coming from whatever they're deciphering as Germanic Europe in ancestry. So probably a pretty straightforward Northwestern European family. Maybe you have some sort of German ancestry or Eastern European ancestry pretty far back on one line, but nothing super crazy that you can really decipher from this other than with your genetic groups from my heritage at this point. Although I should say that Ancestry has their own genetic communities, so whatever they're saying, I'm guessing is probably matching up pretty close to my heritage on that end. So here we have my results from the DR, which is Dominican Republic. We see 38% Italian, 21.7% Iberian, 11.6% Nigerian, 9.5% North African, and then 19.2% other, which includes Central American, Sierra Leonean, South Asian, Finnish, Irish, Scottish, Welsh, and Baltic. So a bit of context, OP is from Dominican Republic, expected the usual mix of Iberian, African, and Native American. Mom's surname is French, ancestor came in the 1820s from Strasbourg in the French-German border, and married a white Haitian woman. From my dad's side, I can trace ancestors from Spain and Haiti back to the 1700s, but after that, all of my family has been in the Dominican Republic. My surprise came because my biggest percentage is Italian. It comes from my mom because she also got tested and her results are way higher and about 10% extra specifically from Sardinia. What do you think? So here we have a quick close up and again, 38% Italian. If it's all coming from his mom and his mom has a higher amount, that sounds like one of the mom's parents likely comes from a largely Italian background. Opie said the mom's maiden name was French and that it traced back to 1820s, but that's just one side of the family, the father's side. So what's the mother's side? 
Is the mother's side known? Because if you're getting 38% Italian, that's more than a grandparent. So I'd also be curious what your dad's getting, if he might be getting any Italian, because you might be getting some of it from there. But if your mom's is higher than yours, then my guess is, is that Italian is coming through her mother's side. At the same time, even through that French German side, it traces back to the 1820s, but it's possible that they might have only been in France since the early 1720s and before that, Maybe they came from Sardinia, which does make sense because where Sardinia is in Europe, it's just to the west of Italy, just to the south of France. I know there's been, you know, French expeditions and other stuff connected to Sardinia, so it certainly would make sense that someone from Sardinia may end up in France for some reason. But if your mom got a really high reading of Italian where it basically looks like one parent, Start building out your family tree if you haven't already, because that should hopefully start telling you a lot more. Now, I'm sure that you have started building out your tree because you already have all this information, but I guess I'm talking more about looking at every single line. Another thing you can do is try to get your mom to test on 23andMe. 23andMe does a chromosome painting for the admixture. So if your mom does that, then she should be able to see if she is getting a lot of Italian through 23andMe, first of all. But secondly, you should be able to see are the Italian chromosome segments showing up on both sides so basically you know at each chromosome you get a pair of chromosomes at each spot one comes from the mom one comes from the dad well is the italian in both in the pair or is it in just one side of each chromosome because if you find at each chromosome it's only on one side more than likely that's coming from just one parent and then you know that one side has that italian and i would also say that if she's getting sardinian specifically I would imagine that Sardinian being an island is one of those places where it's fairly easier to tell the DNA, assuming there's been enough studies and, you know, population reference groups for it. But a lot of islands have endogamy, and when you have endogamy, it can sometimes make it a little bit easier to decipher specific groups. Endogamy being the act of only marrying and having children with other people within a certain group. And islands are very well known to have endogamy just because of the natural part of it. It's a lot harder to get in and out of an island, so a lot fewer people will immigrate back and forth to islands, so you usually have just a smaller, finite group of people, and so it might be a lot easier to tell that. And one last question with this, when you look at your genetic matches, are you finding anybody that has large chunks of Italian and even more people where in their family trees, they have large parts of their family tree tracing to Sardinia and maybe even a specific place within Sardinia. So here we have DNA for review. All my life I was told I was Mexican. Turns out I am Guatemalan, a big surprise indeed. So let's see the full image. So we have Indigenous Americas, 61%, Spain, 14%, Indigenous Americas, Mexico, 7%, 5% Portugal, Cameroon. So I'd say with these results, I mean, I don't know if you're necessarily not Mexican. These admixture results, I don't think, say anything like that. I mean, when you look at your deep ancestry, it does look like you have a huge portion that traces to the Yucatan Peninsula. But I don't know if that would necessarily make you Guatemalan. In all honesty, when it comes to the difference between Mexican and Guatemalan, ancestrally, it's they're probably extremely similar. I mean, there might be slight, subtle differences in certain areas, which, I mean, just throughout Mexico, you're going to find slight differences. There's portions of Mexico where there's high amounts of Asian ancestry in the admixtures. But between Central, you know, America, Yucatan Peninsula, and then Mexico, you know, not much difference when you're talking about Guatemalan versus Mexican. And especially because in my mind, Guatemalan versus Mexican is more of a national identity than an ancestry per se. So like if you've been told you were Mexican all your life, my guess is that's because your grandparents and great grandparents and maybe their great great grandparents, you know, all of that, they've lived mostly in Mexico. But that doesn't necessarily mean that, you know, four or five hundred years ago you had a huge chunk of your ancestry that 
We're actually living in what is now present-day Guatemalan, but that doesn't necessarily make you Guatemalan. And at the same time, maybe you do have Guatemalan ancestry somewhere in there where you do have ancestors that went from Guatemala to Mexico, but I wouldn't say that makes you any less Mexican, especially if that was your recent heritage where your family lived in the culture that they most closely identify to. I would honestly say these results are very typical of what I would expect of anybody of South American or Central American ancestry. And to end this video, I thought we'd look at a good meme. So let's see, R2D2, Ancestry.com, 23% toaster, 18% camcorder, 26% trash can, 4% hubcap, 3% laser pointer, and then 12% Duracell battery. And then it looks like uh, wondering what the rest of the 14% is. So is that that does, yeah, that doesn't add up to 100. That adds up to, let's see, 30, 48. One eternity later. Yeah, 14%. I wonder what the 14% is. My guess is Legos, 14% Legos. Actually, I think he's probably 8% a projector and 6% Legos. Comment down below, what do you think that extra 14% is? And for anybody who's wondering, how is Joe Rogan related to Mikey Way and Gerard Way from My Chemical Romance? Well, check out this video I did right here looking into that. And if you enjoyed this video, please be sure to give it a thumbs up. That really helps me out. You can also click right about here if you'd like to subscribe. It is completely free to do so. And you can follow me on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram at Genie Vlogger. I'm the Genie Vlogger. See you in my next video.